everyone welcome back to the next episode of drawing with dave and so today i want to actually have us jump into a piece i'm currently in the middle of uh it's something that i always love to do kind of show the mid process of a piece instead of just kind of the first 30 minutes which i obviously love to show also but this is actually a piece of concept art i've been doing on my stream and for my patreon backers which is a version of our oc astrin as the uh as the witcher or a witcher I should say. And so I really want to show you guys a process and I figure we can spend the next 45 minutes or so uh, painting and rendering on her. And uh, I can answer a bunch of questions that people had in the past. I can give you an update on all my freelances past month, which has been really crazy. And so let's jump in and we can kind of just sit back, draw a little bit, grab a coffee, grab a sketchbook and let's dive into this. So we do actually have a little bit of color on her already. But I want to take a second and kind of step back and show where we are with the character. We've been doing so much like large illustrations on stream lately that I really wanted to kind of show a process of creating concept art since that's what I do for a career. And so we're going to be doing a front pose, a back pose, and we're also going to take equipment pieces from her and do them separately. Uh, this is something that I may hand over to a modeler at some point. I don't need to do them in a T-pose or anything. Um, I think a pretty straightforward pose. You can still see a, quite a bit of the uh, equipment on her. And so something that the modeler can still go off of to model. To step back to what we had before, we actually started with a pose of the character without any equipment on whatsoever. I actually don't have it in the PSDs right now, so I apologize. And then basically it was finding an appropriate pose and then start kind of like layering equipment on piece by piece, almost like if you were putting on clothing to go outside in the winter. And so we did this kind of like clean line drawing. It was nice and relaxing to spend that time in the line. It helps me figure out a lot of the design. And then what I do from there is I actually put on some quick values right here and just to help things read a little bit better, right? Like I can think this top part up here might want to be a little bit darker. Uh, a lot of it's going to be kind of like leather and cloth and little bits of metal treatments around it. But I want it to be a little bit separated and it might help me uh, when I start painting. So I can jump up to where we are already, and this was some of the color. If I actually take off some of these layers, you can see I usually do my light and layer red thing just to kind of bring, uh, bring a little vibrancy to it. And then really it was starting to kind of wash in a little bit of color. We actually did some changes to our outfit right here. We actually decided that the strap over uh, the breast right here Although it looked kind of cool, it would probably be the most uncomfortable thing ever. So it's never too late to do these type of tweaks and start going through and changing it. So I want to kind of dive in on where I left off. And really I was having a lot of fun on cleaning up and rendering this head area. You know, for a concept that is being sent over to the modeling team, usually doesn't need to be super detailed, but since we're not actually on a tight schedule and this isn't actually going over to a modeler. I don't mind spending a little bit more time and having fun and, and rendering, rendering her up. It, it was cool. I get a lot of different ideas when I'm working on a concept art piece, like we're thinking about her hairstyles and everything like that. You know, I really love the kind of Horizon uh, Zero Dawn uh, look. And this definitely reminded me of it once we started uh, rendering it. I want to get that variation of color in her hair, uh, some orange, yellow, and then some nice different colors of like the beads and things that so she wanted to twist it into it. And like all pieces, we definitely had to make sure that her hair was pretty long. So, you know, it's probably not the best for fighting, but you can see how long it is down here. We can really dive into the hair shape and how it's done once we get into the back view. You know, and that actually might be something that a modeler calls for at some point as they're modeling it. So you may even have to do a piece without the hair, like pretend she just tied it up so they actually know the outfit behind it to model it. You don't want to cover up the entire backside and you're probably gonna get some grumpy modelers on your hands. Uh, I think that's one really important part about creating concept art especially in the game industry, and I'm sure it's the same for movies as well, is kind of always knowing who your end client 
and who is it going to next? You know, if it's just going to the marketing team, then a lot of these like little details really are not going to matter. You know, you can really throw on some crazy lighting, all that type of stuff. But if it's gonna be going to a modeler, readability is super important. I know it's, you always wanna throw on some like pretty crazy lighting or have this wild pose that may look good for your uh, portfolio. So sometimes you have to have restraint and it's difficult for me sometimes too. I actually used to be a lot worse about it and I used to get a lot of grief from certain modelers. So it's something I've tried to make sure in the past to, to clean up. But yeah, I've had so much fun in this kind of crazy sketch phase lately. I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit more for you guys. I have a habit of working pretty zoomed out, but it might be harder to see on uh, YouTube. So we'll just we'll just go in, uh, quite a bit here. Yeah, we're gonna give her kind of like yeah, cat eyes. I haven't really decided how I'm going to render and figure out her eyes at this point. I'm still trying to not get super focused on one area, but that is a little bit more focused than usual. It's usually going back and forth, adding darks, adding lights, and kind of pushing that balance all over the place. I do spend a lot of time cleaning up the line drawing underneath, which is, is, is kind of silly sometimes considering how much time I, I do spend on the line drawing. You know, we give a, just a little bit of shine on the, on the lips here. Uh, but I can catch you guys up on kind of my current schedule and how it's been since we've taken the step to freelance. I've been meaning to make a separate video, kind of just updating everybody on the progress, but I, I figured we could talk a lot about a lot of it on here since we're just kind of moving around the piece, rendering and cleaning up. Uh, so I started going uh, part-time at my studio uh, December 1st. And the rest of my week is spent uh, doing uh, freelance illustration and concept art finally. And it's been crazy, super crazy. You know, I've been trying to get more content for you guys on YouTube. What I really want to get focused on is more tutorial videos. We haven't had a lot of tutorials in a while. It's been a lot of like time lapses and these kind of like chill drawing sessions, which I think is great. But I, I would love to be able to attract uh, some people that are looking for very specific uh, methods on how they can improve their painting. Since ultimately that's really why I'm here and on the channel is to help as many people as I can either improve their art or move into a career that is a very scary thing to do. You know, it's, it's a really, uh, I feel like a courageous journey to become an artist and choose to become an artist professionally. Uh, I know what that fear is like, that kind of unknown and the idea of at one point I need to make a living off this to support either myself, my family, you know, it's something you're passionate about and you can't imagine doing anything else. And it's really only us artists that really kind of understand that struggle. Sorry, a bit of a tangent there, but uh, it is important to me. And so I love hearing your all's questions. And I've heard from so many of you that have were struggling with art and it really helped you push through certain barriers. And then even quite a few people that actually landed their first job in the game industry. And that is just uh, phenomenal. So cleaning up a lot of the edges around her hair. And you can see that uh, I do keep a, a quite a bit of line in here. I don't always have to totally render out the object in space. Especially for these, I kind of like that stylized look of, of keeping some of it. Uh, so back on what my schedule has been like. So basically once I announced that I was going freelance, I was fortunate enough I did have a lot of companies, a lot of clients, whether it be publications or different game studios, uh, email me about, uh, about work, both illustration and concept art for certain studios. Uh, almost all of it has been under NDA, so I haven't been able to show anything, talk about any specifics, but it has left me completely slammed with work, which, uh, which is a good thing. I would say one of the hardest things about it so far is the announcement really being at the beginning of December, which is a real crazy time 
for everybody. You know, you have people going on vacations for the holidays. You know, I found myself because I started taking on so much work at that time and being really afraid of being able to make up that kind of money to help support a family uh, since then is I said yes to a lot of projects. So I really found myself working through even Christmas Eve, I was up till 1 a.m. Uh, painting for clients with really strict deadlines. And so that's been tough, but we have gotten through it. I actually do have a lot of work uh, under contract due by end of this month, which is January. So it's really just getting through this month. And then I think I am gonna kind of slow down on my, my own workload. It has prevented me from creating as much content as I want on this channel. I, I really wanted to get a couple of videos out a week with a lot more kind of uh, direct tutorials. But since I have uh, such hard contract deadlines, it's you cannot miss on those. Those are something once you take a project on, especially from, you know, these are major studios with piles of paperwork they send you. If you ever want to work for them again, you must hit these deadlines. And I, I do like to stay ahead of the, ahead of the curve. You know, I'll work, work pretty hard, make sure I get uh, work sent over to art directors. And so they send me feedback at it. At, since you always have to account for all that, right? You want to send work as early as possible because they're probably going to be sending you either edits or the art director or whoever is managing your workload. It's going to have some feedback for you. You're going to have to do some tweaks. So that's super important, but it's going steady. It's been fun. You know, I love so much. We've been having uh, more daytime streams on Twitch, which has been great. And we've been working on this piece actually on Twitch this past week. But I'm actually really happy to just kind of relax this morning. I have a, a large coffee. And this is really how I start my day. You know, you get into the studio. This is probably my favorite part of any painting I work on is you have a solid base you kind of know where it is, where it's going. And you're really just having like a ton of fun rendering it. And you also kind of have in your head, you're like, all right, I think this is going in a pretty cool place. I think, you know, we can make some things work with this. And then really you're just kind of zoning out and kind of just polishing and adding like little nice little rendering things. And you're not kind of like in that fearful phase of, I hope I can make this work, which I seem to enter all the time, no matter what lately. That is definitely a thing. So I do want to still kind of look like our character, Astrin, which, you know, our OC is pretty much a mix between, I, I say, a superhero and a League of Legends champion. And we had some discussions on what, uh, what Witcher school. I think most, a lot of the discussions so far have been between a Manicor or a Griffin. So that's something we're kind of figuring out. I know most females don't survive the mutation, but Astrin, she's a special case. Uh, this was actually voted on by the uh, Patreon members. I can't get enough Astrid, I guess. But I love this idea, and I, I was such a big fan of the series that came out recently, which I'm sure most of you have seen. Uh, it was it was amazing. You know, I loved the Mandalorian as well, but I would say I actually enjoy The Witcher even more. As far as recent series that I really kind of fell in love with. Yeah, I'm a hardcore fantasy person when it comes down to it. If you can do fantasy well, you have my attention. So I'm just preparing a lot of these shadow shapes. I want to make sure it reads pretty well. Like I said, you don't have to go too crazy on all this stuff, but if you're having fun working on it, you might as well just spend the time and do it get in there and just noodle around. Yeah, so normally you don't have, say, a ton of time. One of the kind of general things I have found in my experience as studios, especially working on MMOs, is you're usually assigned, it's usually about two days per character you're looking at. That is with feedback. 
So you generally do have to work pretty fast, but if you're kind of sitting at your desk, kind of just painting with little interruption, hopefully you don't have a lot of meetings either, that it's not too bad of, of a pace, right? And that may actually not include a back pose, right? You're kind of figuring out a character, you're getting feedback from your art director or your art lead. A lot of the time it might just actually be your art lead since your art director is usually pretty busy handling the entire scope of the project. Uh, so one video I'm actually looking to make right now, and I think I've seen that there's a couple of videos on it. I do want to have a video, and it's really just going to be an open discussion about the merits of should you go to art school? It is a question I probably get the most of on my Twitch channel. Is art school worth it? Do I need to go to art school? If I want to work in games, do I have to go to school for it? And it's a pretty in-depth conversation. I have definitely some opinions about it. I'm definitely a pro school person, but schools are very expensive. And I think there's a lot of things to factor in for everybody's decision about it because it's different for every person. There's different motives and there's different things that you can take out of it. Without getting in too deeply right now, uh, I definitely think it's something that's worthy of us having a conversation about. So if you guys would like to see that type of video, uh, definitely post down below. I really want to get your guys' feedback on what kind of content we can add to the channel that can kind of, you know, add a little bit more variety. You know, more than just tutorials and time lapses, you know, I would love to be able to just kind of sit down and have more kind of discussion with everybody. You know, we had actually someone on my channel the other day. They said they were, uh, I think, a 14 or 15 year old student in high school, want to do concept art for a living. And they were just uh, picking my brain about stuff. And then we kind of got into the conversation of the opportunity of talk, being able to talk with professionals these days. And it kind of, you know, turns me into an old man about this stuff. And I think how amazing that actually is. Like, is and how much that would have changed even my own um, career path when I was younger if I had the ability in my small town of where I lived to be able to talk to a professional get their opinions you know almost have like a real live conversation you know I just had this really kind of like small town art class and I had a high school art teacher that despised me for some reason it really turned me off from a lot of art and I didn't know what I could do or what I had for career choices uh, or anything. And so I just think that's so special and so amazing that what people have access to these days as far as making those decisions and really evaluate and even show to their parents that like, you know, look at like these people make a living off art. I, I think that actually happens to probably a lot of kids these days is they probably still have parents that have old school mentalities, like not knowing that there are careers in art, what opportunities are, and then you can make a very good living and have a very happy life creating art, especially in the entertainment industry. There's just so many options of everything that exists these days. I think that's pretty amazing. And so I wanna be able to help you guys out as much as possible. And I think a lot of these discussion videos could be pretty good when it comes down to it. Yeah, so we're going to spend a good amount of time just kind of hanging out, we'll talk, and kind of rendering on her hair this morning, I think would be pretty good. I'm not sure what the objects up on the top of her hair are, but that's something we can kind of figure out and discover. Yeah, so we're really kind of cleaning up line drawing, and I'm actually going over a lot of the parts of her hair that, because we just kind of like had the line drawing and then did some multiply layers over it, they get a little muddy. I think that's always important to clean up. So I'm trying to get as much as I can done. I think about 45 minutes for this would be pretty nice. Kind of show a little bit of progress and kind of how I clean these things up. And it's really, I ha I figured out the big picture of her, at least her pose. You know, we can always figure out some all some smaller details later. But this is pretty nice too, so I'm taking out sections and figuring out how to render each section and how the shapes work the way I want. So like right now, I'm just looking at this kind of section of hair right here, right? And like, how do we make 
this section of hair feel interesting, right? How do we break up, say maybe this is more of kind of like a, a platinum blonde streak right here. And that's really kind of how I look at this piece right now. Not bouncing around too much, right? And like this right here, this is a little bit more yellow. That's kind of nice. I might kind of blend the edges a little bit. I'm hoping to get this piece actually finished within a week or so. And then we actually, I actually have a, a nice surprise video for you guys. Uh, next Saturday is when I think I'm looking to put it out. I can't reveal too much on it yet, but it's a collaboration video. Very much been uh, looking forward to putting it out. Uh, we've actually had a planned uh, for a little while. So definitely stay tuned for that. I think we should be putting that out on the 18th of this month, which should be a Saturday morning. And we're both kind of working on stuff and wrapping up some small details about that. You know, I could spend a little bit more time going in. You can figure out kind of like what these little beads are. They could have like little small details on them. But for now, it doesn't matter too much. I really just kind of like the vibe of it and the pops of color it gives it right now. You know, sometimes you can take some of these colors uh, just from underneath. These kind of like accidental colors that happen. That's always pretty nice. We don't have to get too crazy. We'll just throw these little extra lines down into the hair just so they're not such massive chunks of hair. You can kind of show us a detail of what exists inside it. I'm gonna take some of this orange. It's like a more red orange. Bring it up here. Make it a little warmer. And then once I clean up all this kind of under under stuff, and maybe we'll add a little bit more of this orange right here. And then we can bring that in down here. You know, this is what I talk about when I talk about bringing up my saturation slowly, just like little bits here and there. You can really add to it. You know, we've actually had people inquire about even already wanting to model this after uh, for a project. And I am totally okay with anybody taking any of the concept art that we do uh, for this character. And if they want to practice modeling or any of that, they complete, can, completely can use this as a, as a guideline. Uh, I would be honored. I'm always honored to see anybody do anything with, uh, with my art like that. That's, that's pretty amazing. We, we do this work right here for fun and to help guide anybody in any way. And so there's still parts like this, you know, the white medallion part is not actually been colored in or painted. So I'm not too worried about right now. There's a lot of details down here uh, around the chest we haven't figured out. It's a little strap heavy. And then right here is kind of ambiguous. I haven't really figured out how I'm gonna clasp all the straps together uh, where they all kind of belts around. And then especially the details. So we have our potions down here, which I have really not figured out yet on what we're gonna do. But I do want to figure out a specific design and we can actually take them and like separate them. At one point I'll do kind of like a lineup on the side of all a bunch of different ways. Maybe she, how she holds them or how they kind of go in, how the tops are to it, right? Lots of little stuff. That's always some really cool stuff to figure out later. You know, I wasn't sure really how much to scar her up. You know, you can really go pretty extreme or, or not too, too much at all. I haven't really decided. Yeah, well, she probably needs a few, right? All right, let's figure out the top of this hair here. Let's zoom in a little bit for you guys. One of the biggest things I knew about starting her character was going to at least try to keep, uh, you know, her red hair, uh, freckles. Uh, I still want the kind of, if I can convey some type of kind of vibe from her expression. I know it's, she doesn't have too much of an expression right now, but you want to keep that kind of simple too, especially if the modeler is going to be modeling her face. 
if she's making some kind of crazy face and her face is distorted, it might make it a little bit more difficult for them. And so that's just something that you always have to keep in consideration. And I think stuff like this is always going to be very strong in your portfolio as well. Uh, we haven't really talked about portfolio development in a while, and that is going to be the most important thing if you're looking to get a job in the industry. Is going to be your portfolio. Uh, that is what at least gets you in the door for your interview. You know, there's different things to kind of get down as far as an interview goes, as being like a personable person and someone that looks like they gel with a team and it's going to be easy to work with. That's a major thing, right? When you get in there for an interview, one of the biggest things they're always looking for, like, is this person going to work well with the team that we have already? It's really what they're working for, right? If you get in with a portfolio, that is really what they're just trying to see. Because you could have an amazing portfolio and you get in there and you're just like, wow, this guy seems like a real jerk. He seems like he's super hard to work with. And it really doesn't matter how good your portfolio is. And trust me, some of that may seem, um, seem obvious, but I've been on a lot of concept art interviews hiring other people. And you would think that a lot of people did not get that memo. You would be surprised. You know, being like super agreeable, you know, you don't want to be, you don't want to seem fake about it either. I mean, I think most people want to be pretty agreeable and just get excited about it. But I think show, showing that energy, that type of excitement about getting onto the team, uh, I think it goes a long way. But they want to be able to see your ability to adapt. So like I always said, getting uh, your foot in the door for the game history is the most important thing. Is everything. Yeah, so even if it means, you know, working at smaller indie studios, it doesn't uh, really matter. And you have a higher chance of really getting hired at those places. Once you're in, once you're working with a professional team, really makes a massive difference. You're drawing and painting and working with others all day. And you think about that advantage that gives you instead of being someone that might have to work a different job and then work on your portfolio at night. And then you make contacts at that studio. Some of those employees may go to someplace else. And it's, it's really just makes, it makes a world of difference. You know, it's great to have your eye on the larger AAA studios like Blizzard or or Riot or Epic. But the uh, competition is also going to be so much higher, right? I got to tell you, I, I think I've really loved working at smaller studios these past few years. Uh, you just have so much more control over a project. Your kind of voice means a little bit more. And there's been so many great games that have come out in the past few years that smaller indie studios have a lot of power these days and a lot of like there's more and more of them popping up because you can still produce great games on a smaller budget. Some of the budgets are still pretty significant. I mean you're not making a game for like fifty grand, but it's kinda of nice to be in that atmosphere. All right, let's figure out this thing back here. We're gonna draw over some of this line, clean it up. If you can tell too on this background, I actually have a slight gradient. It's pretty subtle right now, but you know, it's white at the bottom and you kind of have like a slight gray at the top. I think it just adds a little bit something and I may add even more gradient later, but instead of just having like a flat background, it can just sometimes seem so boring. I see a lot of concept artists do on a flat background, and I guess it's fine uh, most of the time. But for me, I like adding that like little bit of interest, and I think it I think it's a nice little thing to add, without kind of doing that kind of concept art kind of box behind the character, which I've never actually really understood. That look has always kind of baffled me. Sure, it probably came from like a couple of concept artists at one point. Maybe some way to add some quick value behind the piece. 
and then it kind of got picked up that like, all right, this is how, maybe this is how you present concept art. I don't know, maybe it is. Maybe these are like these weird little tubes or something. I mean, you could certainly add some more kind of specific lighting to this at one point, even if it was this kind of white light hitting from the side. Uh, you can kind of create some nice shapes that way sometimes. You know, for me, I don't always go around and spend the time to figure out every little thing. Yeah, I've worked with some concept artists that, I mean, they're, they're great and it's awesome they do that, but that they'll stop and like, all right, what is this little top thing in her hair? Is it like some weird like stick shoot thing or, you know, sometimes I kind of just go in with these kind of general shapes and color and I want to keep moving on the piece. And if that's actually a thing, we can kind of figure that out later. So that's I'm not really sure. Sometimes I don't know what I'm painting. I just kind of go with it. It's kind of a lot, a lot of how I paint is I kind of shoot from the hip quite a bit, which I think is not always the best thing for a concept artist. I've managed to pull it off <laughs> these past 16 years or so, but I do shoot from the hip sometimes and kind of will sketch stuff for the modeler that I'm actually not even sure what it is. I like the shape, I think it looks cool, but when they go to model it and they ask me for it, they're like, what is this thing? I'm like, what do you, what do you think it is? What do you want it to be? It can be whatever you want. Then you can tell the modeler, they're like, I wanted to give you a little bit of creative freedom on this. I, I want to see you explore. Usually doesn't work, but we try. So we kind of just have this kind of general light source coming from the front. It really isn't anything specific. I just want some variations of color in the hair. I wouldn't want the entire thing just to be red or orange. I think we can add like a lot of little interesting things in it. And so a lot of this is kind of like a flat colored area up here. And we can actually start breaking all this down into smaller areas. And always remember to flip. You know, flipping is super, super important. It's a great way for your brain to reset, retackle parts of the piece, reevaluate kind of what you're doing. Especially since you don't always have time to just kind of get up from your desk, what you're doing, take an hour break, and then come back to it kind of find those, find those mistakes. I used to have a terrible time about remembering to flip the piece. I would work for days on a piece without flipping it. And then I'd be like, all right, I guess the piece is done. Let me do a quick flip at the end and uh, see how we look. And then the true nightmare begins as the character looks like they got run over by an 18 wheeler or it looks like gravity has shifted 30 degrees into the air. So it's always good. It's always good to do it. Flip, flip early, flip often. Goes along with saving. Save early, save often. It goes flipping, you know. So I'm not like super in love with kind of the shape that's happening on this side. Kind of like two kind of, I don't know. We could add a little bit more of something. Not really sure what, something to maybe break it up. I think that's important. You know, gravity doesn't always exist properly when it comes to the hair that I make. But it's my world. So I'm clean up all this kind of gray sketch underneath. I really want us to get a lot of this upper hair done for this video. There. Yeah, but uh, like I was saying before, if you guys have any questions or things you want to hear me talk about, uh, specifically in the game industry, 
you know, a light, you know, day in the life. What are some things to look out for? I'm, I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure what questions, other questions y'all might have about working games. You know, it's a super rewarding and I've loved most, I almost said every minute of my career, there has been some some crazy days that, that make you question it in the game industry. But overall, uh, it's been fantastic. And I think most artists, especially that have an interest in games and art, would really fall in love doing it for a living. There's so many programs in schools and things that you can learn either on YouTube or Gumroad or Schoolism or Nomon. So many opportunities these days for everyone to learn and kind of up their chance uh, on getting a job in the industry. You really, you get out what you put in when it comes down to like you know, workload and what you're studying and then you know trying to focus on what you're studying. That stuff is important. You, know, you really have to put that effort in. I did go to school with quite a few people that, I don't know, thought they could just ride it out and at the end get a job after. And guess what? They did not. It does not work like that. The effort and drive like really must be put in. It is a, uh, it's a competitive industry, absolutely. There's a lot of people trying to land those jobs. And you have a lot of people that kind of just like stick around. So you might be competing with someone else that's been painting and working on stuff for a long time. And so they may have a uh, couple of years on you as far as portfolio development and what kind of pieces they have banked. But seriously, keep at it. I've, uh, I've worked with a lot of students now that have landed their first gigs in the industry. It's pretty, pretty amazing. And I really don't have much experience at all when it comes down to creating concept art for movies. I have a lot of friends that work in the movie industry, but most of them are modelers or animators. As far as I know, most concept art for movies is usually contract per project basis. You're not gonna be like sitting in a studio. Most movies, at least at one point we're hiring concept artists. So you kind of work for a couple weeks and then you're kind of off trying to find another project to work on. Where at least in games, you'll be kind of saddled at a studio and either kind of work on one game for a long time or they might throw a couple IPs at you. And you kind of work your career in one studio or until you decide maybe that studio is not for you, you want to check out something else. And that's always reasonable. Some studios just don't mesh well with certain people, either if they don't like their projects or, you know, sometimes even people they work with. So you have people float around. And, that th and the thing is, industry is small. And so you never want to burn any bridges at any studio. You know, everyone kind of like knows each other at some point. You're bound to work with someone Again, that you were at a previous studio, it's crazy amount of times that I'll go to a studio and then I'll run into someone that I worked with at EA 10 years ago. And it just, it, it's wild. I've been to a few studios and I've bumped into the same person at like three different studios. Apparently this person hops, hops around. But say if I'm going in there for contract work and I just have a meeting with an art director, and I'll see the person there. I was like, oh my God. I will not call him out. But yeah, people hop around. That's why really just getting your foot in the door is so important because the ability to hop around becomes so much easier than just trying to get in there for the first time. But I hope that this, uh, just seeing this process is still helpful. This is kind of just me in rendering land, which is a land that I love to live in. Figuring out these little shapes, you know, color picking certain areas and 
It's really just, and this is how I, people sometimes ask me, how do I know when a piece is done? Usually when I feel like I'm done cleaning it up. I think it's a part of my process. That's something I could fix. I think if I wanted to jump to color sooner, I probably could, and I wouldn't have to spend so much time doing cleanup. Uh, so that's something that I, I'm actually going to try to look to fixing. I, I'm a little worried about my values, but hopefully I can still kind of keep a focus on where my values are at and how they're working. All right, so even like, as I look at it now, there's a lot of stuff I would like to bring up later. Um, as far as color wise, is like her neck and everything is pretty desaturated uh, from under her jaw. It's just areas I haven't really tackled with color. I know at one point, I will definitely kind of get some more red in here. Sorry, this uh, has like a billion layers on this piece already. I do usually kind of end up smashing it down. Yeah, you know, even just taking like an overlay layer, and you know, I kind of just like brush in like a little bit more reds down here, or kind of like where the outfit might hit parts of her neck. Just like some slight parts. Usually I like to hit color kind of under the jaw. But you want to be careful. You don't want to go too, too crazy. It's easier to step up the saturation and then feel like you went too far, right? You know, we could actually kind of darken up her lips and give them a little more saturated towards the middle area right here. It might give it like a little bit more life. Same with some parts of under the nose. And then sometimes I like to like darken up with like a little bit of red and kind of on the inside of the eyes, kind of where the tear ducts are. And maybe around the top, near the top brow. But so you can go back and be like, well, maybe are the lips not done up too much. I don't want her to seem like she's got like lipstick on or anything. So I might take the eraser and just kind of like, kind of tap it on, just drop it just a little bit. I want the whole piece to feel like it's kind of brought up at the same time. All right, let's clean up the uh, this top area real quick before we wrap up this week's episode. Yeah, I just really wanted this week's episode to be really kind of chill, hanging out with you guys. Uh, I'm kind of, I have so many projects on my plate, it was a little difficult for me to kind of just tackle something new right now when I have about five plus pieces due within, I'd say, two weeks. Every day is kind of a painting scramble right now, mostly my fault for taking too much on. That's one thing I'm learning to do as well is when to say no. I think that's just as important as everything else. I'm not feeling any type of burnout yet. I'm still so excited about freelance and everything that comes with it that I'm still enjoying so much of it. And I think that's what really burnout comes from. It's not really like, oh, I just had too much work, so I burnt out. It's, it's a lot of everything else that comes with it of either working on stuff you don't like or if you're in a bad place mentally about the work, even though you have a lot of work, there's a lot of other things that kind of can funnel into it. Yeah, who knows? Here's, there's some weird, maybe she's got like weird little bones in there. She's more like, you know, kind of mystical. But you can kind of see that this top saturation with her hair right here and where it looks. And so this bottom hair is still kind of muddy, um, a little more gray. Uh, I'm definitely going to, I think, gradient that down too. I would like it. We could actually make it go make possibly from this red and orange and go down almost to like a darker brown down at the bottom. You know, at first I thought about making it lighter, but it's almost be nice if it almost gets more brown and dirtier at the bottom. If she did keep her hair down, kind of having that kind of feeling of it being kind of dirty and everything. I don't know. I assume she'll probably clean her hair. Uh, but this is our, you know, where we're going with the characters so far. Uh, I've loved working on this piece and I've loved showing everybody the process of creating uh, character concept art. And like I said, like having just a nice simple pose is really good. You don't have to have some type of T pose uh, in my experience. 
And then once we actually finish her up, uh, I will be doing a back view and we're going to break out her equipment uh, as, as well. So I want to be able to show both swords. I think we should show, uh, really spend a lot of time designing what her swords are going to look like and including her potion bottles and even maybe her, her bracers or other kind of specifics and even the uh, little medallion herself itself. Uh, guys, thank you so much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, uh, thanks for checking out the video. And if you like this content, always uh, hit the subscribe button down below. It means a ton. And I guess you can always hit that bell if you want to be notified when these go up. Super, super appreciative. I'll see you all on a video probably next week. I do want to do some more videos talking to you guys. And I have a surprise video coming out for you next week as well. Thank you so much. I hope you learned a little bit today.